Manchester City is now almost on top of the football hierarchy. They have won the Premier League for four out of the last five seasons, but they are still struggling to fill up their stadiums at all times, and are, according to Pep Guardiola, not getting the respect they deserve for how they play and the trophies they are winning. This video will tell you more on why this is the matter and how Man City cheated their way to the top. Manchester City is the only football team in the world that invests as much money in its players. According to the CIES Football Observatory, the sum of the transfer fees paid by the citizens over the past 10 years is 1.7 billion euros. The team appears to have boundless financial resources. After all, Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan is the owner. Manchester City actually managed to raise its marketing revenues in the first corona season, in contrast to the professional soccer teams throughout England and Europe, who have suffered greatly over the past two years as a result of pandemic-related financial issues. Manchester City was also able to increase its sponsorship deals. The defence line of Manchester City is estimated to have cost around €244 million Euros alone. It is one of the reasons the squad recently won its fourth English Championship in five years and was the Champions League semi-finalist in 2021. The defence includes the names like Ruben Diaz, John Stones, Aymeric Laporte, Jao Cancelo and Kyle Walker. But some people are asking how Manchester City is able to spend so much in each transfer window. Following Mansour's takeover of the club in 2008, Manchester City quickly rose to become one of the world's most prosperous sports teams after spending decades wallowing in mediocrity. However, there are political implications to the English club's proximity to the autocratic United Arab Emirates. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine caused the political situation surrounding Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich to deteriorate, the spotlight on state control in professional football has shone more strongly. In an effort to defend the team's commercial activities and stall inquiries of rule violations, club leadership has hired some of the most well-known and expensive lawyers in Britain. And it appears that there are plenty of irregularities. The holding company for Manchester City appears to have broken the rules by paying millions in fees to players' agents and orchestrating a covert triangular deal to sign an underage player, according to the information from Der Spiegel and the journalism network European Investigative Collaborations, or EIC. Numerous documents made available by the whistleblower website Football Leaks. These documents offer an in-depth look at the club's internal operation and the government's organisations in Abu Dhabi. This is enough to cause a few cracks in Man City's legal defences. The billions of euros invested in Man City by the UAE appear to be primarily an effort to exploit success on the football field to boost the country's reputation, similar to the Qataris' investment in Paris Saint-Germain and the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund's purchase of Newcastle United. After all, the UAE suppresses political dissent at home, violates human rights and is suspected of committing war crimes in the continuing conflict in Yemen, which it denies. It appears that the team owners are eager to spend whatever it takes to present themselves in the best way possible on the football stage. But why was Man City prohibited from playing in Champions League? Manchester City was found to have seriously violated financial fair play regulations and, as a result, they were prohibited from playing in the Champions League for two seasons. But this was a matter of suspicion for most of the English football clubs. The Premier League also made the decision to investigate these agreements to know the financial mishandling or fraud. They also received a €30 million Euro penalty. According to an inquiry, the Adjudicator Chamber of UEFA's Club Financial Controlling Body, or CFCB, found guilty City of overstating its sponsorship earnings between 2012 and 2016. Man City was the subject of an investigation by the CFCB in March 2019 as a result of claims that they had violated FFP regulations. German tabloid Der Spiegel first published these allegations. Man City was found guilty by CFCB of intentionally exaggerating the financial value of a sponsorship arrangement in order to deceive UEFA and increase their spending. According to the leaked emails, Sheikh Mansour, the owner of Man City, provided the majority of the club's £67.5 million annual sponsorship from Etihad. 
According to a document that was leaked, Etihad only contributed £8 million to that sponsorship in 2015-16. Mansour's own firm, the Abu Dhabi United Group, provided the remaining funds. How has Man City reacted to this? Man City was unwilling to go into great depth regarding the situation with the media and anticipated to keep up this stance until the appeals process was over. They have, however, claimed that they want to challenge the ban and have previously refuted any misconduct. Man City stated in a press statement that they were disappointed but not surprised by UEFA's decision. Manchester City appealed the decision to the Court of Arbitration for Sport whilst being represented by over a dozen prominent attorneys. Despite having convincing proof of Manchester City's dubious business practices, UEFA lost the case and Man City's European ban was overturned. The CAS panel of three European lawyers decided by a majority that it would not consider the legitimacy of those Eti Salat payments because they were made more than five years before the CFCB charges were brought in May 2019, so were, quote, time barred. But Man City was not at all acquitted of the charges, even if the ban was overturned. In fact, the judgment recites the AC found that the ADUG had funded the payments and that, Management of Man City was well aware that the payments made by a third party on behalf of ADUG were made as equity funding, not as payments for sponsor or account of genuine sponsorship liabilities. Sheikh Mansour's business, Abu Dhabi United Group Investment and Development, or the ADUG, held the title of Manchester City's official owner from 2008 until the team was moved to a different firm owned by Mansour last year. UAE government representatives have stated time and time again that ADUG is a wholly private company and that Mansour's investment in the English team is also wholly private. An attorney for the finance ministry in Abu Dhabi testified before CAS that the ADUG is absolutely unattached to the UAE government or the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. The distinctions between a private football club and an authoritarian government are almost impossible to tell at Manchester City. The Premier League leaders could face serious issues as a result of the recent discoveries. The English Football League has already spent years looking into Manchester City, primarily behind closed doors. According to leaks by German newspaper Der Spiegel, the inquiry team is concentrating on three main charges. One, in breach of the rules, underage athletes allegedly received financial inducements from Manchester City to sign contracts. Two, Abu Dhabi club supporters are believed to have given the club only a percentage of their money, with Sheikh Mansour providing the majority of them. Three, Roberto Mancini, who presently coaches the Italian national team but formerly served as Man City's head coach from 2009 to 2013, is said to have gotten a large amount of his salary under the table by a phony consulting agreement. In regards to the sponsorship payments, Der Spiegel published several pieces in 2018 about backdated contracts, unexpected infusions of cash, and other sources in those pieces. It was explained how Sheikh Mansour allegedly broke the law by passing off sponsorship funds as direct contributions to the club. According to reports, the money in question was paid to Abu Dhabi-based businesses who would subsequently wire it to the club. The system lets the club claim a low amount of direct ownership investment and a higher sum of marketing earnings, which is clear breach of UEFA's financial fair play regulations. These regulations were put in place to stop teams from going into debt or distorting competition on the field by spending more than they make. Since it has become evident that the regulations are ineffective, other ones will be put into place to take their place. Since 2018, Manchester City has been under investigation by the Premier League. The league upholds financial regulations resembling those of UEFA. However, the club has made every step to thwart the probe, and it appears that the club has just been as antagonistic to the investigators as it has been to UEFA. Man City was assessed a 10 million euro fine by CAS for obstructing the UEFA inquiry and failing to comply with the Chamber's investigators. The Premier League probe was the lone subject of a case that was pursued all the way up to the second most senior judge in the UK judiciary. He determined that it was in the public interest to report on the matter. 
The court declared that after two and a half years, during which the club had been crowned Premier League champions twice, it is remarkable and a subject of legitimate public concern that so little progress has been accomplished. We'll have to wait and see how the Premier League inquiry turns up, as well as any potential repercussions for Manchester City. But this summer, Man City has once again opened its pockets to acquire another great talent in Erling Haaland who will help them get an even better reputation with more people defending them on social media, just like they want to accomplish with their ownership. If you like this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get instant notifications of all new videos.